So I really haven't been in the shop very much lately because uh, between Christmas and the New Year I had a hernia operation and I'm recovering just fine. It's also been really cold and really stormy and wet. So I thought recovering from an operation would give me like lots and lots of time to, uh, to play around on the computer and make all kinds of new things and learn all kinds of new stuff and that wasn't really the case at all. I basically just consumed all kinds of uh, entertaining garbage instead. But since Christmas, we did kind of try and batten down the hatches a little bit so we'd be ready for these storms and the wet that came through, and that's not too much fun to watch. We also took down Christmas and put it all away. I got the train set put back and, and ran a train on it just a few minutes ago, so that's all been taken care of. And, you know, none of that's really trivial, all the cleaning up from Christmas and, and putting things away. But, you know, it's mostly Louisa that did it because I was on the couch. This time probably it's more about projects that are on the horizon, things that we're going to be working on or I hope to get to at some point soon. The first would be a little more work in the laundry room before we finish that up. We found a shoe pan that sort of is good for the shoes, but I, I'm not sure if it's exactly perfect, so we might want to think about doing some more stuff there. And that countertop really needs to be refinished, because that orange color just isn't really working for us. The idea also was we were going to add drawers to go underneath and raise the countertop up a little bit higher. So I had drawn up plans for this with drawers that would pull out, and the drawers in the top were just going to sit on top of the machines. So we started thinking about that and we decided that the weight was probably a concern to put that much weight with the countertop and two drawers full of stuff all resting on top of these machines. So I had to go back to the drawing board and kind of redesign these things and that's kind of where I'm at right now thinking about how to build a framework to kind of hold all this stuff up above the machines but it also has to be removable because we want to be able to take the top out and all the drawers in there. We just want to have access to be able to get the machines out easily. A lot of things to figure out and I'm going to focus in on doing a little bit of that when I get back into the projects. So you might remember that recently I've been enamored with this archtop ukulele that I made. Thinking about making more of those I did some drawing while I was on the couch and started trying to get closer to firming up how I'm gonna how I'm gonna do these. Here's the archtop ukulele drawing that I was working on. And I'm just trying to sort out how big the neck is gonna be and what it's gonna look like and things like that. So one of the things I was trying to figure out was modeling the neck in 3D software so that I can CNC cut it on my hobby CNC cutter. I'm in Blender and I was trying to figure out how I could model a neck in Blender. Um, this one here in front is one that I got online somewhere but I think that I wanted to change mine a little bit so it would be a little bit different because I can't do anything the way you're supposed to do it. I have to find the hard way and do it that way. So anyway I started figuring, trying to figure out how to model this thing. It's not easy. So I'm still trying to figure that out. We'll see how that goes, but that was some of my couch time spent there. So I had a new idea for another ukulele that I'd like to make, and I became interested in the idea of making a steel string ukulele. And I wanted to make it a solid body, and I wanted to run sort of a regular magnetic pickup through it rather than the, uh, the microphone type piezo pickups that are on most uh, ukuleles if you've got one like that. And I thought as long as I'm doing that, it might be really neat to continue on this path of making ukuleles that look like some other existing instrument but haven't been made before. Like the other two ukuleles that I'm working on that are the unfinished projects ukuleles that are meant to look like this Dan Electro, this 1959 Dan Electro. So I decided it might be really neat to do one an old Moserite electric guitar and the Ventures played them. So I was really interested in making a Surf Ventures sort of early, and it's very much in the same vein as sort of the 59 Dan Electro, at least to me anyway. The Moserite was definitely played by the Ventures, and it was sort of promoted by the Ventures, and they had a signature model. It looked like this. I'm designing this one with a ukulele neck 
and it's going to have a couple of little pickups in it, I think probably single coils. I don't know where I'm going to get this bridge, but I'm probably going to have to make it. So I've, I've sort of got this drawing together, and I, I was thinking it would be really neat if I could actually put the signatures of the ventures on it. I took the signatures and I put them on digitally, and I think that uh, it might be kind of neat to like laser engrave them or something like that on the front so that they're there and I can have my Ventures Edition solid body steel string electric most right ukulele. I think it'll be the only one in the world. I love that when you can make something that it's the only one in the world. Another project that I was fiddling around just a little bit with was my grandfather's streetcar. There's this really cool picture that's at my folks house of this streetcar, the number 1400. And it's in uh, a space that my dad uses as his office. And I have no information about this picture whatsoever, other than it's really cool. And I've sort of wondered about it for years. So I started trying to model this in 3D. And this is as far as I've gotten so far. I'm still trying to get a lot of the details right. I, I had a lot of trouble trying to figure out how to do this front roof section. It was a real, it was a real issue for me trying to figure that out. Couldn't figure out how to curve the fronts, so I, I'm, I'm hoping that I can curve the fronts after it prints. So they call that streetcar a matchbox streetcar, probably because of its size, and. Um, there's not a lot of information about it. It was like I didn't find any plans for it and I really couldn't find much to work from. So a lot of this has just been working from photographs that I've found. But that leads me to an unfinished project. And here it is. It's this one. This is Dad's streetcar, only I made it in cardstock. The sides and the fronts are all made out of cereal packet card. And I cut it all on the laser and glued it together with Elmer's glue. The reason why it's unfinished is because it's missing some details around the front here and, and it doesn't have any markings on it or anything, but, it's, but it's, it's here and it works. And that became the motivation to try and make a 3D version and see if I could 3D print one as well. Music! Music's always good. So Charlie is working on an entire digital music album which is really cool and he's going to do all the artwork for it he's going to do all the music production and um, and he's creating his own sounds for this too so we set him loose on a couple of blocks of ice that we made in our freezer and he was shooting for ice cracking sounds that he could add to his music he's keeping us in the dark about this right now but we're pretty excited to see how it goes I'm not sure if it worked out the way that he had hoped, but, uh, but I think he'll probably find some cool sounds in there to use in his music. We can't wait to hear and see how this all comes together. I did a quick little three ukulele version of uh, Little Grass Shack, and that was because I already had the video available. What was it? 15 ukes? I just needed to re-edit it and remove 12 ukuleles so I could have a three ukulele version. I've been trying to put together an instrumental version of Ain't Misbehavin, and that's been on the docket for a little while. I think the first version I recorded was way too fast, and it was just not fun at all to play along with on the bass. So I recorded a new version, and now I just need to re-record the bass to lay over it and get that done. So that's one of the things I've been sort of rehearsing on the couch. Then there's the song Am I Blue, a friend from work suggested maybe I try that song and I hate to think how long ago I thought it would be really fun to try and go crazy and do some really unexpected version of it so I started shooting for doing the Eddie Cochran rockabilly version and boy I laid down all these tracks and I did all this work and it just came out miserable it sounded completely terrible and I couldn't figure out why if it doesn't sound right I can't figure out why and and sometimes that's really fun when it works out something happens that you didn't expect and I go wow what happened there but you know this is one of those times where it just went completely south and sounds really terrible so I've kind of skipped working on that one and um, I moved forward to trying to record um, just like a ukulele and bass version which is what you would expect from me and i think i've recorded maybe two versions of this at this point and so i'm narrowing in on being able to get this but i think it still needs the bass and it still needs some second vocals and this one has been elusive i've been chasing this one for a long time and i would like to wrap it up 
So I think that's about it. We've done a lot of things, sort of trying to move into the new year, uh, cleaning up after Christmas. Uh, there's been a lot of couch time, trying to replicate the holiday spritz cookies that I had when I was a kid and eating those, and it's all been really pretty great. So here's to hoping you have a wonderful new year, uh, prosperous and healthy, and uh, thanks for watching, and uh, maybe I'll see you on the next one.